everyone, please take your seats. Africa has a very, very special place in my heart. Anyway, the reason I am here this afternoon is because I want to be able to answer a few questions which I'm sure many of you have asked yourselves, okay? And the first question that I would like to answer is, why network marketing? Do you guys know why you are here today? Do you know what this business with QuestNet is all about? I'm not hearing any replies. I don't think you know why you're here. Do you guys know why you're here? Do you know what network marketing is about? I don't think you're convinced. Who among you actually know what network marketing is about? I don't see any hands. Okay, so I saw one hand. I guess the other 1,500 have no idea, right? I would like to find out, can you please raise your hand, those of you who have had absolutely no experience in network marketing before QuestNet? That's, that's practically everyone, right? How many of you have had prior experience before QuestNet? I see about maybe 20 hands, okay? So, it is pretty clear that most of us are first-time uh, networkers, and I feel that it, it would be a good opportunity for me to be able to explain many of the advantages of networking the business that you are now involved in compared to any other typical type of uh, job or other business. How many of you have heard of a very popular entrepreneur, uh, author, investor, successful businessman by the name of Robert Kiyosaki? Okay, I'm, I'm glad that many of you read these books. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki in uh, one of his very popular books called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, explains a lot about the different types of people who are involved in business, okay? Allow me to very quickly show you. Will you be able to show this on the screen? Okay. Robert Kiyosaki in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which has sold over 20 million copies worldwide, talks about uh, cash flow quadrant, okay? The cash flow quadrant basically splits the number of the, all business people into a quadrant or four different areas. The one on the left, the first one on the top left, is what he calls letter E, or for those people who are employed. How many of you in this room today are actually employed, receive a salary? That's a lot, okay? How many of you are in business, small business? How many of you are not employed and do not have a business? Oh, that's a lot. How many of you have absolutely no idea why they're here? A few people raising their hands. Anyway, so the one on the left, top left, is for those people who are employed and receive a salary. Okay? The one on the bottom left are for S. S stands for small business. Or for those people who get into the business by themselves. Usually, this will require a small amount of capital. Unfortunately, the small business here also gives you small returns in your business. On the top right, we have the big business. The big business applies to those companies probably with about maybe 500 employees or probably even more. And obviously, to be able to set up a big business, would require a huge amount of capital. And finally, on the lower right is what he calls investors. Those people who actually make their money work for them. Okay? 
Now, some people have wondered why was the title of the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Because Robert Kiyosaki, when he was growing up, had his real father tell him some basic core values which he felt his son should learn. And what were these? He told his son to go to school, to study very hard, get good grades such that when he got older, he would be able to get a good high-paying job. Okay? And then when you've got a good high-paying job, then you save money for your retirement. Now, who among you in this room today feel that you've got a good high-paying job? Is there anyone? I can't see much because of the light, but is there anybody raising their hand? Oh, I see a few on that side. Uh, I'd like to ask you about your jobs, but you're too far. Okay, so most of the other people in the room today feel that they do not have a good high-paying job, right? Now, if you do not have a good high-paying job, then I'd like to ask you, what are you doing still employed, earning a not-so-good income? Why, why do you still work if you're not satisfied with your income? Huh? There's no other choice. Is that right? I heard somebody say there's no other choice. There is a choice, guys. Come on. You are here at V Africa. This is the choice. Right? Now, when he was growing up even more, a uh, father of a good friend of Robert Kiyosaki became very close to him. And this father of the good friend happened to be a very wealthy businessman. And this businessman taught Robert some very important rules, okay, which was totally different from what his original father or poor dad actually taught him. The rich dad told Robert as he was growing up, to build a business which he can own, which he could be able to pass down to his children and to his grandchildren, right? Because remember, as an employee, the moment that you retire from your job, you will no longer be able to ask your son or your daughter to take over your job, right? Besides, with the current economic situation worldwide, I'm not really even sure if there is such a thing as a good job with good security. Because I'm sure that people who worked for some of the big companies that have folded recently never thought that this would ever happen to them. Now, I'd like to ask all of you, uh, what, is the, what would be a good income here in Uganda? A monthly income. Can somebody give me an idea? What would be a good monthly income as an employee in Uganda. Can someone tell, give me an idea? Is $200 a month a good income? Not a good income. When those of you who are employed, remember you raised your hand? Okay. Does that mean that all of you or many of you are receiving more than $200 a month? Yes or no? Oh, okay, wait, I'm, I'm confused here. You say that $200 a month is not a good income. And yet, many of you earn below $200 a month. Is that correct? Isn't that a bit confusing? You say it's not a good income, and yet you are earning about $200 a month or probably even less, which means obviously that you're not satisfied with your income. Correct? Okay. If you will allow me, remember, AVP Mahendra Kumar earlier said that you should give people in front trespass, remember? So allow me some trespass. I hope that no one gets offended, especially those employed, by what I am about to say. Do we have a deal? Okay. Now, let's just imagine that you are making about... 400,000 Ugandan shillings 
I would say roughly 200 US dollars per month, okay? So I'll, I'll show it in US currency. $200 per month would give you in one year times 12 months about 2,400 US dollars in one year. Are you guys with me so far? Okay. Now, at what age do you normally begin to work as an employee? 18? Is that okay? Would 18 be okay? Younger? Older? Older? 25? 25? 22. Okay, just for the sake of... Uh, just, just for this discussion, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll assume that you can start working much earlier. Let's say you start working at the age of 18, okay? Okay, 25 then, 25. At what age would you normally retire? 60? 65. Okay, let's just say 65. You started working at 25. You retired at 65. That gives you 40 years to work, right? For simplicity's sake, I will just merely multiply this by 40 years, okay? That should give you about 96,000 US dollars over your lifetime. Okay? Are you guys with me so far? That's 96,000 US dollars over your entire lifetime. Now, who among you dream of owning your own beautiful dream house? Who among you would like to have your own dream house? Would you be able to buy a good dream house for $96,000? No. Maybe you're dreaming of a mansion. I think you could get a pretty decent house for $96,000, don't you think? But then again, wait, please. You might be able to buy a portion of your dream house at $96,000 in one condition. You don't eat. Okay? You don't eat. You don't spend for anything and save your entire salary for 40 years. What do you think? Is that something you can do? I don't think that's anything anyone can do. Right? Now, so then, maybe some of you are thinking, is that all I'm going to earn until I retire at 65? $96,000 might seem like a lot of money here now if you had it in cash, right? But $96,000 40 years from now might not be worth much. In fact, I'm not even sure if you can probably buy a bicycle for $96,000 in 40 years. What am I telling you here? Okay, because you see, money, if we were to save money as Robert Kiyosaki's poor dad had suggested, if you were to save cash, the bad thing about holding on to cash as savings is that it depreciates in value over time, right? What you might be able to buy for 100,000 shillings now you might have to pay 150000 in two years or maybe even in one year. Do you agree with me? Okay. Which is the reason why Robert's, Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad said to him, do not ever be employed. Because by being employed, imagine yourself at retirement with this kind of money, maybe, maybe even more, possibly much less, after you spend for medical bills, food, 
rent, transportation, and everything. And so his father, his rich dad, said to Robert, build a business. So now that brings me to the second quadrant here, which is S, small business. By small business, I mean probably having some sort of a small store somewhere or maybe a transportation business. When I was on my way from the airport to this resort, I saw a lot of vans, like uh, Toyota vans or Nissan vans, and on the side it said taxi, right? So I would assume that there are a lot of people in this country who would actually dream of maybe owning their own vehicle so that they may be able to rent it out as a taxi or maybe even as a bus and earn income from it. Am I correct or not? Okay. Can someone from Uganda please tell me how much does a van usually cost? Let's not talk about a brand new van, a used van. How much would a used van cost here in Uganda? Anyone? Give me a ballpark figure in U.S. dollars, please. How many? 18 million? One eight. $9,000. Okay, $9,000. You will be able to probably purchase a second-hand, a second-hand van, okay, and get into the business of owning your own taxi or minibus. Now, who among you have 9,000 US dollars in your pockets? Not much. In fact, I don't see any hand being raised. Oh, I see one lady with $9,000 in your pocket. You have it with you? Wow. Uh, security, make sure that... Uh, <laughs> make sure no one approached this lady, okay? She's got $9,000 in her purse. Anyway... $9,000 is a lot of money to spend for a small business. I'm not even sure about the possible returns uh, in such a small business. You see, the problem with owning a small business such as having one van and you maybe even driving it yourself is that cars break down, right? In fact, the most likely reason why the previous owner sold it to you as a used vehicle was it was breaking down, right? Plus, with the price of fuel today, I'm not exactly sure if you're going to make a lot of money driving your own taxi or minivan. So then, if I was to make a decision, I don't think I'd like to drive my own used van. Are you guys still with me? Okay, so now let's talk about the top right in the quadrant, which is letter B, or big business. Big business. Robert's rich dad always said to him, get into either big business and or become an investor. But never, ever be an employee or never get into a small business. Why? Because in a big business, those people who own big businesses, they're actually very smart. Why? Because what they do is they hire the smartest people they can find to run their business. Okay? You see, in a small business, usually you do everything yourself. Right? Right? But in a big business, the difference is you delegate. You teach, or you find people who are probably smarter than you, pay them if you can, and then let them be the one to run your business. Like what Mr. Warren Buffett did. He purchases companies, has a lot of CEOs run his companies, and he sits on the board of his holding company, making all the money in the world. By the way, he's probably one of the richest men in the world today. Okay? I'll get that later. Thank you very much. Okay? So, the only problem with getting into this is that this usually requires a lot of capital. 
but the returns may be very, very good. Okay? In fact, I believe he was saying that companies he described in this quadrant were companies such as Microsoft, Infosys, those kinds of companies that require hundreds of millions of dollars to operate. Investors, on the other hand, okay, are the smartest of them all, I feel. Why? Because they make their own money work for them. Are you guys with me so far? On the left side here, these people work for money. Okay? Here, you work for money. Here, you have your own small business. You work for money. For money or for your own security. On the other side, okay, these are the people who actually get to enjoy time and financial freedom. Why? Because those on the right side of the quadrant are actually those who earn a passive income. When I say passive income, that means that without having to work as hard as you did in the beginning, you are actually able to earn just as much, if not much more, than what you actually used to earn when you were setting up the business. Can you imagine having a million dollars in your bank account today? Just imagine, okay? Or is that too difficult to imagine for some people? Huh? Try to imagine having a million U.S. dollars in your bank account today. Now, I would say that a 5% interest over one year would be fair. Is that okay? Is that fair? Just having your money sit in the bank gives you 50,000 U.S. dollars a year. Doing nothing. How many of you would like to make 50,000 U.S. dollars a year by doing nothing? By simply having 1 million U.S. dollars in the bank? Come on. Who among you would like to earn 50,000 a year waiting at home for your money in the bank to make 50,000? That's easy money, right? That's the ultimate goal of everybody, or that should be the ultimate goal of everybody who is now here in V Africa. Now, you see, we do not want you to be networking until the day you die. Although that's not a bad idea, okay? In networking, usually, you work hard, very hard, in the beginning, maybe in the first few months, few years, maybe even the next couple of years. But as your network grows, you, start, you, you begin to have a passive income. As what Robert Kiyosaki says, passive income. And when this money starts to keep on coming, then you can actually begin to relax. You then begin to have more time freedom. That's when you can have the money that you are now earning make even more money for you. Are you guys with me so far? There are so many advantages to networking over any other typical type of income generating business or employment. As said in the video, in networking, what do we require you to do? Especially with QuestNet, what do we require you to do? Pay a registration fee of $10. That's it. Now, some of you are wondering, oh wait, I have to buy a product, don't I? Some of you are probably saying that, right? Do you know that you do not have to buy a product? Or am I, am I sounding crazy now? You actually don't have to buy a product if you can find a retail customer to buy the product for you. Right? Which means... If I enroll for 10 bucks in QuestNet and somebody else wishes to buy a bio disc for her own use, she can buy it and that qualifies my business center. Are you guys with me? Now, so what is the exact amount of capital, the minimum amount that is required for you to get into QuestNet? $10. How much is a second-hand Toyota van? 
$9,000, which unfortunately only one lady in the room can afford. How much would be a big business? How much would it take to set up a big business? Millions of dollars. Right? The best thing about our business, particularly with QuestNet, is that the startup capital is practically nothing. $10. If you wish to purchase your own product, that's fine. $500, $600 maybe. But that's still nothing compared to what you would have spent for buying a used van. Now the question is, if you were driving a used van for 25 years, do you think that at 25, after 25 years, you'd be able to pay a million dollars in taxes? I doubt it very much. Because in the first place, I doubt, I doubt if your van will still be there after 25 years, right? So what am I telling you here? You are in the best business possible in the world today. Forget about the $96,000 at retirement. Let's aim for paying a million U.S. dollars in taxes in one year. Because if some people can do it, I can't see why you cannot. This business does not require you have a college degree. No. In fact, some of the most successful people I know in QuestNet today are those who have had very little formal education. You do not have to be a very good public speaker to be successful in QuestNet. No, you don't. Because the best way to close a deal, or to close a sale, is by speaking up to a person one-on-one. -on -one. That's the best way to do it. How many of you have actually enjoyed watching a movie and told friends about, about it and that convinced them to watch the movie? A lot. Most of us have done it, right? How many of you got paid by the producer for referring the movie? How many? No one. Now, how many of you enjoyed using the biodisc? How many of you told your friends about it and got paid for talking about it? Now, are we in the right business or what? There's no difference between talking about good food, a good restaurant, a good movie, or a good product. The only difference here now is that QuestNet gives you a wonderful commission for just talking about it. That's the wonderful thing about our business. Some people call it referral marketing, word of mouth marketing, direct selling, networking. It's called by so many different names. But it's one and the same. This is a type of business that is going to rule the world in a very, very short while. And you know what? The best time to be in it is now. So then, maybe after having talked about the 96,000, the cash flow quadrant, maybe some of you are saying, right. I really know, now I know I'm, I'm in the right business. But the next question is, am I in the right company? Remember watching the video, it said, find a respectable company that you can be passionate about. Remember watching that? Now, some of you are probably thinking, okay, TG's convinced me I'm in the right business, definitely. Okay, but I'm not sure if I'm in the right company, QuestNet. Maybe I should tell you about QuestNet. For you to be able to fully understand what you've gotten yourselves into. I know that many of you have actually heard this story. And for those of you who have, I beg your indulgence. But I feel it is imperative that those of you who are here for the very first time know why QuestNet is here in Africa. 
You see, this year we celebrated our 10th anniversary. And maybe to many of you, that doesn't mean much. Because you joined us last month, or three months ago, or six months ago. How many of you have been with us for less than one year? Less than one year. That's a lot. That is a lot. Okay? So then, I can talk about a 10-year anniversary, but that might have no or not much significance to many of you. Right? So I should explain to you how this QuestNet came about. You see, it was back in 1998 at the height of the Asian economic crisis. In 1998, everything in Asia was going down. All businesses were collapsing. Okay? That was the time when some, when a few people decided to get into a business called network marketing. I happened to be there in 1998 when someone talked to me about a business called network marketing. Now, to me, network marketing was a joke. Okay? I'll be very honest with you. In fact, I thought it was a scam. How many of you think that network marketing is a scam? You have no place in this room today. Oh, suddenly they all went down. Okay? The reason I feel that you're here today is because at one point maybe, or maybe now, you've more or less believed that this is a legitimate business. Okay? But don't take my word for it. Allow me to explain. When I was first told about network marketing in 1998, I said to the person who tried to tell me about it, I said, don't get me involved in those scams. I do not want to ruin my name. Okay? And by the way, I forgot to mention to you that back in 1998, in my home country, the Philippines, I was a television news anchor. Okay? And I had been doing the news then for 10 years. So practically everybody in my country knew me. Imagine. And somebody comes to me and says, TG, you should get into this business. It is so cool. You can make so much money in, in very little time. I said, don't waste my time. I don't want to ruin my name. Because you see, to a television broadcaster, reputation is everything. Are you guys with me? Can you imagine listening to a news anchor on CNN knowing fully well that this person was a criminal? I don't think you'd probably listen to that person, right? I'll bet the next thing you do is change the channel and listen to BBC instead, right? So that was something I did not want to happen. But then you see, after some time, I began to think, what if there was some truth to what this person was telling me? Although I was convinced in the beginning that this type of a business was a scam, after some time, I asked myself, what if, what if it was true? Maybe I should try it out, okay? And so what I did was, I did try it out. With my family, I got into the business. But then you see, one thing about me is when I get involved in something, I become very, very passionate about what I do. I got involved in this company. I will not name the company. I got involved in that company. And I put in 100% of my effort into building a network. And true enough, within about four to, two, oh, sorry, four to eight weeks, I was already picking up 5,000 US dollar checks per week. Okay? 5,000 US dollar checks a week. Imagine making that kind of money. The moment I began to make that kind of money, I dropped broadcasting. I dropped everything. Okay? Now, here's the sad part. After about two months, suddenly, the check which I was expecting every single week to come from the United States because we were then dealing with an American company, suddenly stopped coming. Are you guys with me? So I was expecting my check on a Friday. The Friday came and no check. I got scared. 
Wouldn't you be scared? And then, I remember some of my friends, maybe it could have been Japa telling me, don't worry, just tuck in the mail, the check will come. I kept on working. And the following week, I was expecting another $5,000 check. Guess what? It did not come. I was becoming really nervous. Why? Because my entire reputation was on the line. Are you guys with me? Now, imagine that happening to you today. After having introduced your best friends, your teachers, your grandmother, your brother, your sister, suddenly your check doesn't come. Imagine, just imagine. It's not going to happen, guys, okay? But just imagine. Can you imagine how that will make you feel? Terrible, right? And so, when that began to happen, the members of the V at that time, a small handful of people, okay? Then we got together and asked ourselves, what are we going to do now? We're in deep trouble, okay? And so, what we decided to do was call the American company. And we did that. We spoke with the owner of the American networking company that we were dealing with. And then he says to Dato Vijay Ishwaran, because we were together then, he says to Dato Vijay, Oh, uh, Vijay, yeah, what, what, what's the problem? And we say, what happened to the checks? Where are they? Why is it not coming anymore? And he says, oh, I changed the plan. I changed the compensation plan. Can you imagine that so far? And we say, you can't do that. Because there's an agreed compensation plan. You cannot just change the plan and tell us no more checks. And you know what was even worse? He said to Vijay, because we were doing this business in the Philippines back then, he said to Dato Vijay, you know Vijay, the problem with you is you're too soft with these Filipinos. They're just Filipinos. Did you hear me? You're too soft with these Filipinos. They're just Filipinos. How would you feel if somebody said, don't worry about them, they're just Ugandans. Can you imagine what that made us feel? Having heard that, we knew we were in the wrong company, right? Problem was, we already had built a network of about 1,500, 1,800 people within a few months. So then, we all got together again and decided we'd better do something drastically because otherwise, all of the 1,500 people who believed in us will lose their entire life savings. Are you guys still with me? And so, I remember exactly where that decision was made in a coffee shop in some hotel in Manila. Suddenly, a decision was made that we should just continue the business with our own company. Okay? Problem was, we were all networkers. We were not CEOs. I imagine suddenly a bunch of networkers from here saying, let's just put up the company. It's not easy, believe me. Okay? And then, suddenly after about two weeks, the owner of the American company calls us back and says, Vijay, what happened? I'm no longer receiving the checks that you would usually send to me via FedEx or DHL. We used to send checks and application forms regularly to the United States. And he says, what happened? Why did you stop? Would, wouldn't you stop? Because at that time, we felt, hey, this guy was cheating us. We did not want to have anything to do with his company. And you know what? He had the balls to tell us, tell you what? I'll put it back to the old plan. Just send the checks. He must have thought that we Filipinos were stupid. Well, Dato Vijay is not Filipino, okay? but some of us were. Okay? Probably thought we were stupid. So what did we do? Totally ignored him. And instead, 
founded a company called Gold Quest International. Now, problem was, we did not have any experience, we did not have any capital, we did not have anything much, except the passion to save the 1,500 people from suffering because of the stupidity that that American company had done. Are you guys with me so far? Yeah. The very... One of the most important tasks that Dato VJ then did was to raise funds. We had to raise funds to set up the company. Why? Because at that point in time, the American company had already owed the network a lot of money. They owed the network a lot of money, and we had to fix the problem. So what did GoldQuest do? It borrowed a lot of money at the height of the Asian economic crisis. And mind you, the only way to borrow money back in 1998 in Asia was by mortgaging your house. That was the only way. You could not get money through any other means. Nobody would buy a car. Nobody would buy a house. No, there was just no one to buy anything. Okay? And somehow, Gold Quest was able to raise enough money to put it up, to set up the company. And do you know what the very first thing that Gold Quest did back in 1998 was? To pay all of the IRs of that American company everything that it owed the network. Imagine beginning to work with one networking company, suddenly that networking company disappears, another one takes over and says, don't worry, we brought you into this mess, we'll take you out. So what we'll do first is pay everything that they did not pay you, which turned out to be 250,000 US dollars back then, at the height of the Asian crisis in 1998. But then again, what happened because of that? Imagine being paid your commissions by a company that never received any money from you in the first place. That is what this company is all about. The reason we are here today, the reason QuestNet is here today, is because 10 years ago, we could not allow 1,500 people to lose their entire life savings simply because one person decided to change the plan. The reason QuestNet here today is here today is not because somebody decided, let's make a lot of money and put up a networking company. Which is the reason most networking companies, by the way, actually become companies. Because somebody says, hey, QuestNet is doing so well, why don't we put up our own network marketing company? That's how most networking companies come about. But that's what sets QuestNet apart from the rest of the networking companies out there. The reason we are here today 10 years after, is because still after 10 years, we want to practice rhythm. It's not about the money, guys, believe me. It's not about the money. It's about being able to make a difference in someone's life. That's what it's all about. I hope that somehow, having known the history of this company, Oh, but by the way, some of you might ask, wait, you were talking about Gold Quest, now suddenly it's QuestNet, right? In 2004, we decided to diversify and get into various different lines of products, okay? We were no longer just into gold products. We got into vacations, telecommunications, many other different kinds of products, which did not make it seem right for us to be continuing under the name Gold Quest. And so it changed and became QuestNet. So QuestNet, although 
It actually became QuestNet in 2004. Continues to celebrate the beginnings of Gold Quest back in 1998. That is what QuestNet is all about. Are you guys with me so far? Now, how many of you would choose to be part of another company that is interested in simply making money? Or how many of you would like to be part of a company that has a heart for the network? How many of you? I'm glad that some of you can see that this company actually has a heart. Because I tell you that is what sets QuestNet apart from many if not all of the other companies out there. Now, I have one final question to answer for you. Why the V? Right? The first question I answered for you was, why networking? Then I explained to you why QuestNet. Now, why the V? Do you guys realize that the V founded QuestNet? Remember? I was talking about the V earlier, back in 1998. The V, a handful of people who said, we cannot allow all of these people to be ripped off. So let's form QuestNet. Let me differentiate for, for all of you the difference between QuestNet and the V. Okay? QuestNet is the network marketing company, right? They have a company, they have offices in many, many countries. They have wonderful products, okay? But then it is the V that is the heart of QuestNet. It is the V that is the sole marketing agent of QuestNet. It is the V that does all of the training materials for you. It is the V that organizes V Africa for you. It is the V that has the heart for every single IR worldwide. Are you guys with me? That is the reason, that is the reason, it is the V really, that is the reason why from 1,500 IRs in 1998, we now have way in excess of 4 million. I stopped counting at 4 million, okay? This would not have grown to this size had it not been for the heart of the V. I thank QuestNet for its wonderful products. I thank QuestNet for its wonderful services, for its fantastic compensation plan, and for all of the effort that every person in QuestNet gives for every IR. But I must also have to mention that the V is the one responsible for everything that you see here today. It is the V that built the network from, from day one. And it is the V that will be with you for as long as you ever want to be in this business with QuestNet. So now, imagine QuestNet being the vehicle. QuestNet is merely a vehicle that will allow you to change your life. It is the V driving the vehicle. Can you understand that? Now, Every person here today, whether you like it or not, is actually a member of the V family. Okay? And uh, I remember earlier, Arun and Sati were saying that I, I was uh, very, very close to my family. I truly am a family man. I love my family very, very much. But then, but then again, I'm not merely talking about my wife, my son Miguel, and my son Gabriel. I'm talking about everyone who actually has a desire to make a difference in this life. I'm talking about every one of you who has a dream, a vision to be able to change their lives. Because if you are one of those people who actually has a dream and a vision, then you are in my family. Are you guys with me? By the way, one final question before I go. How many of you are fully contented with life today? Fully contented with your life today? Oh, no one? Isn't anyone going to raise their hand with me? 
That's good. I'm glad that no one... Oh, now I see a few hands raising their hands. A few people raising their hands. You see, if you're fully contented with your life today, then there really is no reason to be here, right? Because there's no reason for change. And the theme of V Uganda is time to change. Time to change, right? The reason we are here today is because we have to have a change in our attitude. If for some reason you think that the way to go on with life is to be employed for the rest of your life and make $96,000 after your retirement, then you're in the wrong venue. Because that is going to drag you down. If you feel that your life is worth $96,000 by the time you die, then you're in the wrong venue. This venue is only for people who have big, big dreams. This is for those people who will be able to achieve their dreams. Some people are probably wondering, is this guy serious? I cannot be more serious. I cannot ever be more serious than I am now. Because, you see, for all of you who did not raise your hand when I asked the question, who was fully contented with life today, with your life today, I am very glad. Because that means that there is some room in your life for improvement, right? There is some room in your life for improvement. Because if there is none, and your cup is full, as Mahendra Kumar said earlier, then why be here? If you're here today, it's because somehow you want to be able to experience some change in your life. Now, I promise you one thing. If after this VCon is over, four days from now, and you go home and do not change, then I promise you that 25 years from now, you'll be living exactly the same life. Are you guys with me? If you come home from the VCon in a couple of days and say, there was no magic. I don't think I will change. Then just be prepared to live the rest of your life the way you're living it today. Because we're not going to change it for you. It has to be you who will have to change your own lives. We're merely here to guide you. We're merely here to give you the training materials required to change. We're here to inspire you. We're here to motivate you. But we will not change your life for you. The only person who can change your life is you. So that's a decision you have to make. At the end of this week on, when you come home, ask yourself, do I want to be living exactly this same life years from now? Or is it time for me to change? Because if it is time for you to change, then change it now. This is the best opportunity in your life to make a difference, to be able to change your life. These kinds of opportunities do not come very often, I swear to you. It definitely has changed my life and the life of thousands of people I know, tens of thousands of people I know, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people I know in this business. But for that to happen, First, there has to be a change inside your head, right? It has to happen from within. You can't expect us to change it for you. A lot of people ask me, PG, why, why do you do this? Why do you go around traveling the world with your family and talk in vegans? Why do you do that? 
I do it for one reason. Every now and then, as I, like recently, I was walking in an airport. I can't remember where, okay? I was walking in, in an airport in a foreign country. I was carrying my son with me. And someone actually came to me, someone I did not know. Came to me and said, Mr. TG? I said, yes. I was surprised somebody knew me in some other country in some international airport. I said, oh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm with Questnet, he says. I said, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Okay? And he says to me, I've heard you speak. I've heard you speak. And as I listened to you one time, I thought to myself, maybe this guy could be telling the truth. And so I decided to take a chance with QuestNet. I just wanted to thank you, he said. Imagine, imagine someone coming up to you one year from now, maybe one of your downlines coming up to you one year from now and saying, thank you for changing my life. That is the most inspiring thing that can ever happen to a networker. And that happens to us on a very regular basis. That is what drives the V forward. That is what drives us all to organizing VCONs. It's no joke organizing VCONs, believe me. You cannot imagine what all of these people in service have to go through. They don't get paid to do this. They, don't, they hardly get to sleep as we are here in the VCON. They hardly get to eat while they are serving at the VCON. Why do you think they do it? Passion, yes. Because somehow, each and every person in the V, particularly those who have been with us for a long time, have the heart to be able to make a change in some other person's life. We hope that through this VCON, we will be able to make a small difference, at least in some of you. And hopefully, who knows, maybe a couple of years from now, somebody might come up to us and say, TJ, I heard you speak 10 years ago in Uganda. Just wanted to thank you because now I pay a million dollars in taxes every year. I want to thank all of you for having spent the, the past hour with me. I look forward to coming back to this wonderful country, hopefully next year with my new baby. Thank you very much.